Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School Bible Study. I want to thank each of you for joining with me today as we grow stronger in the Word of God. I want to thank you that as we grow stronger in the Word, that we become more doers of the Word and not just hearers only. Our lesson for today, A Long Hard Oppression. A long, hard oppression. And our lesson is coming from Exodus, the first chapter, the seventh verse through the 22nd. And we are talking about uh, Jacob's family as they grew and they endured cruelty and danger. We're going to uh, look at some uh, answers to certain some questions, such as how many of Jacob's family went into Egypt, approximately how many will come out with Moses. Uh, the third uh, question, who were the covenant people? The fourth question, what three men were the promises to come through? And number five, how many sons did Jacob have? Hey Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I know most of us have uh, studied on it and talked about this lesson of uh, Jacob and his family uh, as they went into Egypt um, under their, under Jacob's son, Joseph, the, the younger son. And so we're going to get ready and dig into this lesson. But first, I want to uh, ask that if anything touches your heart, your spirit, or your soul, or if you have any questions, please feel free to put them at the bottom below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. And also, if something is said that touches you, Please subscribe to my channel as we study the word to get stronger in the word, to be doers of the word, and and not just hearers only. Amen. <clears throat> we're going to get ready and have a prayer first, and then we're going to get ready and start in the lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us this far. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us throughout this week, through uh, all the dangers and troubles that uh, amount about us that you have brought us through. Lord, we thank you that you are our Lord and that you are our counselor and that you are a wonderful God, that you are God Almighty. You are our everlasting Father and our Prince of Peace, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for your blessing uh, in store upon each of us. Lord, at this time, we pronounce healing and deliverance and protection for to everyone that is under the sound of my voice whenever they hear this lesson. I pray that uh, as you said by your word, by your stripes, we are healed and that we claim healing and we walk in healing and deliverance at this time that our body, soul, mind, and spirit as we go forth to be doers of your word and not hearers only. Lord, we pre uh, pronounce protection for any situation that may cause hurt, harm, or danger to any of your children that's seeking to do your will. Lord, we claim a change in any circumstances for each of you that is not beneficial to the strengthening and building up of your faith as the Holy Spirit connects to each of us um, in knowing our needs at this time. Lord, we ask that our eyes be open, that we are able to see clearly, that our ears are open and that we hear, and that we uh, gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high to receive what the Holy Spirit has for each of us, of us as we study your word. Amen. Uh, we want to also, at this time, offer uh, to any of you that has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to please stop right now at when whatever you are doing and know that your soul uh, is to need to be saved, that you do want uh, to not be in hellfire, that you do want to be saved, but you must confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and he will receive you as your Lord and Savior in his life. And then I pray that you will join a Bible-based church and go forth and study the word, be baptized uh, in his word, and be, and go forth and be doers of, your, of his word, and not just hearers only. Amen. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. We want to... Uh, <clears throat> 
ask that each, uh, we want to thank the Lord as we get together to study this lesson that we uh, each learn something very strong or very powerful that will carry us through out this week. Amen. Our lesson, as we said, a long, hard oppression, and it's coming from Exodus 1, uh, verses 7 through 22. And the scripture lesson text read, And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when they when there when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters masters to afflict them with their with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh uh, treasure cities, Phantom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt speak to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sapphira, and the name of the other uh, Pua. And he said, when you go, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are de delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dwelt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Amen, amen. This is such a great and powerful lesson. There's so much for us to learn and to study on in this lesson that we can pattern our life after to not do or to do that we may become stronger in the Lord. Amen. Uh, we go uh, read, start uh, 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 doing a study of the lesson now uh, with the seventh and eighth verse uh, beginning there. It said, The children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Amen. As we know uh, <clears throat> that the children of Egypt, when they went in, uh, those that has read the uh, chapters before know that they went in in a small number. They went in uh, with about 70 uh, total uh, with uh, Jacob's uh, sons and, the, and their wives and their children, uh, including Joseph that was already in Egypt and his family. But then it grew. It grew, it grew uh, by uh, leaps and bounds, as they would say. And the, uh, the king uh, of Egypt become uh, afraid of them, of the, of the size and the a multitude of them, and this is a king that uh, was not around when when uh, Joseph had been there and saved uh, all the people uh, by 
be having the knowledge and understanding of how to save the food to where it would be enough for all those that was in the land, not just those that was at the at the uh, castle or in the area, but he was able to save uh, 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 a large number of people. It's not said how many different kingdoms that came to him uh, for food, but it was a large number that came to him for food. And so we know that uh, uh, Joseph was able to save a lot of them but they but this king knew not of him and so as we see here that when uh people do well many times it is seen while they are alive but after they are gone many times they are forgotten amen commentary says about 603,550 men of fighting age left Egypt numbers 1 and 46 factoring in older men women children and the infirmity the total number of the Hebrew people was probably about 2.5 million people by this time the children of Israel had truly multiplied in the um, 370 years or so since Jacob and his family of 70 had arrived in the land. The seed of Abraham was no longer an extended family, but a nation. The promise that his descendants would be fruitful and multiply, multiply in Genesis 35, 11 uh, through 12, had indeed fulfilled in Egypt. It had multiplied, as it says, the stars in the sky, uh, as the sand on the seashore, as uh, God had told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so God's blessings were not just material in nature. Children are blessings from God. The Hebrews believed that many children meant that God has blessed you abundantly they believed it was a curse not to have children they were no threat to the egyptians when there were when there were just 70 people but now that they were near 2.1 half million it is a totally different story uh nearly 400 years of history are summarized are said to have passed in these verses which represented a line of pharaohs not just one the new king over egypt which knew not joseph was likely one of the pharaohs during the hikus uh takeover even after egypt's native ruler returned to power the hebrew people were no longer honored in memory of joseph the statement that they knew not joseph indicate their contempt for Joseph's previously privileged status next to Pharaoh and the, and the divine blessing that occurred to the people of Israel as a result of this. Note a similar action on the part of a native Egyptian in, in uh, 5 and 2, in Exodus 5 and 2, directed toward Yahweh and submitting to him. As we said as long as Joseph was alive, the Pharaoh remembered what he, Joseph, had done for Egypt. With, with the new leader, there was no memory of, his, of this. He had not known Joseph, and he had not lived during the famine, and he felt no obligation to this mass of foreigners living in his land. Amen. Uh, verses 9 and 10 says, And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come now, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. And man, now we see that the king is ready to uh, kick them out of the land, tell them they got to go out to the sides of the, of the land. They can't live uh, up in the area where they had been living. They got to move out. But yet and still, they want to uh, uh, make bondage of them still, even though they were uh, pushing them out to the side. Amen. We also see here that the uh, children of Israel, they had become strong uh, during this time. They did not uh, just uh, multiply in size, but they multiplied in strength and wisdom and understanding by uh, being around the Egyptians. The Egyptian was a uh, very knowledgeable uh, uh, land of people, so they uh, 
quite naturally would pick up some of the uh, information and understanding that the Egyptians had. So they would also be strong and multiply in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as well. Uh, commentary says the Israelites have so increased in number and in power that the Pharaoh thought they would pose a threat in time of war. So he decided to make slaves of the people and to destroy every male child and thus eventually wipe out the Hebrew race. Three evil rulers in scripture ordered the slaughter of innocent children. Pharaoh, Athaliah, Athalia, in 2 Kings and 11, the, and Herod, Matthew 2. These satanically inspired uh, aristocrats were aimed at the extinction of the messianic line. Satan had never forgotten God's promise in Genesis 3 and 15, a man that uh, he would step on his head, the Satan, the, the, the snake, the serpent, that he would crush his head. And he had never forgotten that, so he had always attempted and tried to destroy the people uh, that God had in store. Amen. Lessons uh, uh, verses 11 through 14 says, Therefore they did set over them taskmasters, taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Phantom and Ramses. So they also had them uh, 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 building uh, with blocks and with bricks and 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 working in the field. I said, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. As we uh, uh, see here, and if you uh, have dealt with any uh, labor in your life, you realize and know for a fact that. Uh, work does not make you weak. It makes you stronger in different areas. Amen. The more you do a thing, it can strengthen you in certain areas uh, and build you up as it did the children of Israel. It said, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. They made sure that they tried to make sure that they would they was woe out when they got back to the house and when they all they had left was to sleep and to come to work. But that was not so. They continued to uh, uh, birth children. They continued to enjoy life in their own manner of doing so, uh, even though the Egyptians felt that they were doing damage to them. Yet and still, they actually was building them up to make them able to withstand and to go through what they had to deal with in going uh, um, to the promised land. Uh, the 14th verse, and they made their lives bitter and with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and all manner of services in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor that so no matter what they had them to do to do they wanted to make sure that it was hard they wanted to make sure that they were uh, 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 in bondage under it that they felt that they had did the worst they could do unto them and this is what they was after uh, commentary says Pharaoh used the enslaved Jews to build the supply cities of Fathom and Ramses but it's instead of being wiped out by his repression, they multiplied all the more. Pharaoh meant the hard bondage for evil, but God meant it for good. It helped prepare the Jews for their uh, erroneous journey from Egypt to the promised land. It helped them to be ready to stand, to walk, and walk without giving out, walk without giving out a breath. And as we know, as we see here, this, this is why many tell you that it is good to exercise, it's good to walk, to uh, build up your strength. So when the time comes, you are ready, you are able to go forth and do what is necessary. Because as we see here, as the children of Israel, as they... Uh, had to go and do and work under hard labor, they became stronger and not weaker. Amen. Uh, the 15th verse through the 19th verse says, And the king of Egypt speak to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sapphira, and the name of the 
of the poor. And he said, when you do this office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Amen. We see here that even though the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, midwives here uh, was disobedient as you know the Bible tells that we are to be obedient to our masters and things but there is a time when we are to be disobedient and that is when it is against the will of God amen when it is against his will then we are not to do the will of man amen and the king of egypt called for the midwives and said unto them why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive and the midwives said unto pharaoh because the hebrew women are not as the egyptian women for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them amen as we see here <clears throat> the midwives come up to uh, Pharaoh and he asked them, why in the world haven't you killed them? You should have killed numbers of, of, of boy babies by now. Why haven't you killed the boy babies? And they said, well, well, well oh, Pharaoh, by the time we get there, they they delivering the babies. The babies is, is, is if they're not uh, delivered, they are already out and then they already know that they're alive so you can't kill them. And, and they hear the child hollering or hear the babe crying. So it, it is not possible for us to do it after this has come about. So he, uh, uh, they show that they're, uh, their uh, uh what we would call it uh their their um loyalty their loyalty that's one of the word i'm looking for they show that their loyalty is unto the lord that he that they are not going to kill the ch the children of israel's babies uh because the pharaoh wants them to be killed uh it says uh commentary says when sapphira and poor who were probably the chief Hebrew midwives, saw the Jewish mothers bearing children on the birth stool. They did not kill the male children as Pharaoh had ordered. They excused their inaction by explaining that the Hebrew children were usually born too quickly. That is, before the midwives could get to the mothers or before they could, uh, you know, stop it from coming or uh, uh, cause damage to it, as I was saying earlier, uh, the child could be coming uh, down and they could see uh, that the, the, the babe was uh, uh, alive and well. This assertion probably had some truth to it, and it probably was so because with the women being so uh, vigorous in working, the more that you move around, the more that you do about before your time of labor, it increases, it decreases the amount of problems and the amount of trouble that most women have with having children. And so the more that you have done or the more that you're doing, it enables your body to work better in the in the laboring process and said therefore god dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty mighty amen as god saw that they uh, had the strength to stand up against Pharaoh and uh, he gave them the knowledge of what to speak when they was in front of Pharaoh that he would not take their lives at doing this pro during this time so it he God blessed them that they were blessed instead of being killed themselves for not doing what they had been told to do and the 21st and the 22nd verse says and it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses and Pharaoh charged all his people saying every son that is born you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive amen as we see here God uh, <clears throat> blessed the midwives women by uh, blessing them with homes, uh, I would imagine they probably already had somewhere to live, but he blessed them with a, a better about to live in because of, of them uh, being uh, where Pharaoh believed that he would, they were part of him, but yet and still they was doing the work of the Lord. Amen. They did not do as Pharaoh had asked. So God blessed that they were uh, given uh, the, the mind to build them uh, decent homes to live in that they because of their job description of what they were doing amen and we also see here 
that uh, Pharaoh, now that he uh, is uh, found out that the women were not able to kill the boy babies, now he charged the people to start throwing babies in the river to destroy them, but to leave the girl babies alive. It is such an uh, awful thing that we hear here, as, as the uh, commentary says earlier, this is the third person that is spoke of in the Bible, uh, two in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament, of uh, where uh, the babies were killed uh, to prevent uh, the Israelites from going forward. Amen. Commentary says the daily notes of the scripture union comment on the midwives. The reward given to the midwives in terms of a flourishing family life in verse 21 was granted them not for their falsehood but for their humanity. This is not to say that the end justified the means, still less that there are no absolute standards of morality but in a world as charged with sin and its effects as ours has become it may be that obedience to greater duties is possible only at the cost of obedience to lesser ones disobedience to lesser ones and this as in all else the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom their fear of the lord being the beginning of wisdom and knowledge and understanding to the midwives and not to kill the babies, uh, they, be, they still flourished and became strong and were able and ready when the time come for them to leave out of Egypt. Uh, foiled by the Hebrew midwives, Pharaoh now commanded his own people to enforce the decree. He commanded that they were to kill the boy babies that was born and to throw them in the river. What an awful and bad situation to be in. And I could only imagine many of them did not uh, want to do such a thing. And there, of course, was those that didn't mind doing it. But, uh, you know, the Lord always made a way because that still did not stop them from having millions to leave out when Moses came to take them out of Egypt. Amen. It did not destroy their strength. It did not destroy the abundance of people. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and look into it to see what God has for you that will strengthen you, build you up, and show you where you are to go forward in, the, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you meditate on this great lesson throughout the week. Think on it, study on it, different portions of it, and y'all have a blessed and wonderful week.